Welcome back to Next Generation. In today's video, we are going to be doing something completely new for this channel. So we're always making DIYs and we realized we've never showed you guys how to use the tools that we use in almost every video. Some of you are probably sitting there watching and have just been begging for this video so that you can make some of our DIYs. So finally, we're gonna teach you how to use some tools. We realize a lot of people who watch our videos are probably beginners, just like us. We never really talk about how to use the tools, we just jump right into building. So now you have this video to refer back to on how to use the basics. We figured we would do this maybe once a month, show you guys a new tool that we use. You know what that means? If you have a tool in mind and you wanna see that next month, Leave it in the comments below so that we can check it and we'll give you what you're asking for. Otherwise, we're just gonna show you the next tool that's in our toolbox. So today, the first tool we're gonna show is one that was probably the first one I learned how to use and we Me use too. it the most frequently. So here we go. It is a cordless drill. Check it out. This drill and all the pieces that we talk about in this video will be linked down below in case you are interested in purchasing it. It is definitely my favorite drill that we have and yes. we have a few. So this one's definitely the easiest. The first thing we're gonna cover are all of the parts on this drill. So we're gonna break down all the pieces, how they work, and then we'll go into how we actually use the drill. What? That's how you're gonna do it? They keep. You have to tell them what you're doing. You can't just slide it in. So here we have a drill. All right, this is how you use it. The first thing is the power source of your drill. Ours is battery operated. So here at the bottom is where our battery lives. We have multiple batteries so that when we're doing any type of project and it dies, we'll have a backup that's already charged. And then here is the charger that it comes with that you just plug right into the wall. You just put your battery in it and that's how you charge it. And then the way that your battery goes into the drill, first you wanna make sure that your yellow button is in the front of your drill. And then you're just going to slide it till it clicks and your battery is in and ready to go. That's how you know. <laughs> and then the way that you remove the battery is by pushing on the yellow button and pulling it right out from the drill. So the differences in the power sources are battery operated or a corded drill. We use battery operated with almost every project because it's portable, it's quick and easy to use. But the difference with a corded drill is it's gonna have an endless run time. So if you're working using your drill for hours on end, then the corded is the way to go. If you have backup batteries like we do, that it can last endless depending on how many batteries you have. <laughs> and you gotta have a battery charging at all times. And then the only other difference is a corded drill is gonna have an increased power. So we used, I think in only one video on our channel and it was to mix concrete because we had a huge attachment on it and we didn't wanna burn out our battery operated drill. So we used the corded one. Constant torque on the batteries will drain them a lot faster. So if you use a corded drill or you're, you're doing something with high torque, uh, for a long period of time and you don't want to burn out your batteries, then get the corded drill because these batteries actually do have a lifespan. So next up is this chuck here. So as you can see, it's got jaws and what those jaws do are clamp the drill bit in place. And you can loosen and tighten the jaws by rotating this clockwise or counterclockwise, righty tighty, lefty loosey, that's a trick. All right, so keep it up. But if you don't want to spin it all day like this to get it to fit your drill bit, which is what you need to drill anything, in case you're wondering. Yep, there's a faster method. So you can hold this and pull the trigger and it goes really fast. Now, be sure that you're not holding this too tight when you pull the trigger because it will burn your fingers if you've got a good grip on this. You may see this flickering light. I'm just gonna go ahead and mention it now. This drill comes with a light source, which is great when you're working in low lighted areas. Every time you pull the trigger, the light will come up and I'm not really sure how long it stays lit, maybe 30 seconds, but you can see it's off. I pull the trigger. And it's pretty bright when you're in the dark. So the next part is the trigger, which is the button that you use in order to operate the drill. That's what that is. Then there's a little button next to the trigger which has a little arrow on it. And that's the forward and reverse button. So that's gonna depend on if this spins 
counterclockwise or clockwise, that's how you're gonna put your screw either into something or pull it out of something. All right, so another cool feature that this drill has is this little clutch ring here. It sits right behind the chuck, but the purpose of this is to increase and decrease the torque that's going to the drill. Which so, is basically the power. Yeah, it's the amount of power in the rotation. Okay, so this one is rated from one to 15, one being your lowest setting. Which is gonna be the least powerful. 15 is your most powerful screw setting. So if you have like a half inch screw and it's really tiny, you don't want your drill set to a torque of 15 or right. something because it's probably gonna strip your screw or break it because it's too much power. The longer the screw or a harder wood that you yeah. might be screwing into or drilling into, then you would want a higher torque. Whereas if it's something that's really soft, like sheet rock, small, maybe. delicate, fragile, then a lower setting is the way to go. So those are the basics on all of the parts to our drill. Some drills have different features than others. So this is just the features on our drill that we use. Now we're gonna show you guys how to use it. All right. This is our process step-by-step step if we were gonna screw something in. All right, so step one will be charging your battery. This one is charged, so we're just gonna slide that on until it clicks. So once I've got the battery in, I need to figure out which drill bit I'm gonna use. So we wanna loosen up the chuck for the desired bit size. I recommend using your hand until you get comfortable with it because you'll burn your hand a lot in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I've done it quite a few times. So we've got our standard chuck here. I know you're probably wondering, well, I thought there was a chuck on the drill. There is. So this chuck holds this chuck. And it's one chuck. You'll hear it click. You want to tighten it a little bit past click. So a couple clicks. That sounds so stupid. You want to have a couple of clicks to make sure it really locks in on the bit. So I got three clicks. I guess that's as good as it gets. And that'll also prevent your drill bit from coming loose. So once your chuck is tightened to your chuck, we can go ahead and add the bit to the chuck. Now, you're probably laughing at me. I know it sounds really funny, but the reason that I like to use this is because once your chuck is locked into the drill, you can quickly and easily pop in and out dr different drill bits for different screws. That's why I really like this. So here we have our bits. If you would like a video dedicated to our drill bits, the ones that we use, how we use them, then comment down below. But if we add it in this video, this will be an hour long video, so. <laughs> We've got a lot of bits. We do. First thing you wanna do is choose the bit that's gonna fit inside of whichever screw that you're planning to drill. So now I'm just gonna take a drill bit and the way that you're gonna put this in is Boom, magnetically. Oh, I like It just slides that. right into the chuck and it is ready to drill something almost. Quick the next thing that we need to do is adjust our torque according to what we're drilling. So I'm just gonna drill in a screw into a piece of wood. We're using some really hard treated two by fours with a two inch screw. So I'm gonna put this on a setting of 15. Should do the job just fine. The last most important step is to be sure you're stabilizing your drill and holding it straight when you go to drill in a screw. A lot of times I've been holding it crooked and then your screw is obviously gonna go in the direction of your drill. So make sure you're holding it, you're stabilizing it and you're gonna be good to go. And it's easy to do them straight once you do a few of them. And the way that you would reverse the screw, if you did want to take it out or reposition it, would be to click your little arrow switch, which will reverse the way that the drill spins. So right now, the arrow is pointing down, so it's going to drill the screw down into the wood. That's how I like to think about it. Whereas if I want to pull it out, I'm going to push the arrow that is pointing up. So maybe practice on a scrap piece of wood yeah. or just get some inexpensive wood that you can do some practice screws into before you start using it for any projects. So those are all of our basics on our drill tool 101 class here. <laughs> we are definitely not professionals. This is just what we've learned over time with using these tools. If you guys like this type of video, definitely comment down below so that we know. I hope you guys learned something in this video. If you did, comment below what you liked. Comment below what you want to see next and we'll teach you how to use that tool so you can jump right into our videos i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you're not already and we'll see you in the next video bye, bye guys, guys.